for the problem. 12.45, tree diameter. So this is a template problem for solving tree diameter problem. Basically, this is a tree DP problem. So we are giving a tree, but this tree is not a binary tree. It can be any kind of binary trees. As you can see the second example. Yeah, we just want to calculate the diameter of the tree. So the definition of the diameter is the same like before. Yeah, actually it is the longest path from two leaf node. So for leaf node three and five. So three to one for five. So the longest path is four. Let me first go to the whiteboard to explain some examples and then go to the code editor to finish the coding. Yeah, so the tree can be any kind. So it means uh, there can be any kind of uh, leaf node. Yeah, let's try to use uh, this example. So for example, we're gonna have a three node from here, and then we have uh, and two node, and inside maybe the values just uh, we make it one one always be one. Yeah, just for easy calculation. We want to return the maximum, uh, the diameter of the trees. So the numbers doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So for this example, one, two, three. So the final result is three. But how can we solve this problem? Yeah, we have to find the longest path for each of the root node. So for example, for this root node. What is the longest path? It is the two. It is from this way to this way. So the longest path is the two. Or it can also be for go to this way and go down. But the longest path is the two. So what is the second longest path? So except for this, yeah, for this node and this node, it is the two. So for the second path, it is the one. For from the root node to the its child, so it is a one. So the final result would be two plus one. So for example, if this node have another child, so the longest would still be two, but we need to choose another, the second longest. Now it becomes a two. So two plus two, it is a four. So how the recursive function works? So the recursive function basically would to calculate the longest path from each of the node. So for example, for the root node, yeah, definitely for the recursive function, we can calculate the longest path. It's gonna be two. Yeah, for, for example, if the path go here and go here and go here and go down, yeah. But uh, this is only from the one side. So this is only from this branch. So, so for branch one, but for branch two, when it goes to branch two, so it is the one. So the final result currently is gonna be the longest plus the second longest, it's gonna be three, but the longest would still be two. And then the function goes to this branch, so the path is two, so it get a result of two. So the longest is still two, because the maximum of two and two is still two. But what is the second longest? So Currently, it's gonna be updated to two. So two plus two, it's gonna be the final result. Let's go to the code editor to yeah tackle this question. Yeah, we will use this example, example two, to explain the solution. So we are giving an ad, and it is an undirected graph, but it is a tree. So we're gonna turn this. Uh, add this into a graph. So the graph will be default date list. Um, I will prepare an adjacency list. And then I'm gonna loop through the edges of the yeah graph. So for UV in edges, so GU dot append with V. And similarly, because it is undirected, so for GV, should append U. Now I got a graph, and then I'm gonna prepare the DFS function. So inside of the DFS, 
DFS function, I'm going to prepare a first node. So this node can be any node. So normally, because there are so many nodes, and the node will start from zero. So let's say the length is, uh, yeah, so the length of the ends does matter, but the node will start from zero. Let's check the question. Yeah, it is from zero to n minus one. So for the DFS function, you can choose any numbers from zero to n minus one. It is still okay. But uh, we are not giving the number of n. We don't know what is the n, but for the smallest number, we know that it should be zero. So after call the DFS function, basically we can return the result. Yeah. So we can prepare a global variable self dot result. Let's say the self dot result should be uh, zero. Yeah, because the minimum pass if there's only one node, so we at least have one node, so the result would be zero. So self dot result would be start from zero, and finally we're gonna return this self dot result. Now we will focus on the main function for the DFS. So for the DFS function, the template would be yeah we're gonna check the child of x node. So for y in gx, we're gonna prepare the longest variable should be zero from the beginning, the first, and then the second longest would be DFS with the, the y. So for the DFS function, so first of all, it's gonna start from zero, and then it's gonna Go to the next. So for y in for y in the x, it's gonna be y should be a one. Yeah. So we're gonna check. So for example, from zero, we're gonna check the mm, longest. So it's gonna be one, two, three. But it's not the result. So the result should be start from a one. Yeah. So the DFS y should uh, plus one to get the uh, second longest. And then we're gonna update uh, the self dot uh, result yeah it should be equal to the maximum of uh, self dot result with uh, the first longest the longest plus the second longest yeah and then we're gonna update uh, the first so the first should be the max of first and second this means uh, we're gonna always get the longest. So this first variable is always the longest path. So finally, we're gonna return this first. It's gonna always be the longest result. For example, uh, the DFS start from zero, it's gonna call the function and it will get the longest. So it will get a three. So this first will be the three, but uh, the result, the self dot result would be the first plus the second. So from zero, the first is gonna be three, but the second, there's no other branch go start from zero, so it's gonna be zero. So the final result would be three. But this is not finished because the DFS function only goes from zero, but actually it is called from bottom up. But when it calls to not one, so for node 1, it will update the result. It will get a result of 4. Yeah. So from this branch, 1, 2, 3, it is a 2. 1, 4, 5, it is a 4. Yeah. And then the function will go to 0. Actually, the 0 is called from the last. But 0 didn't update the final result. Because for 0, the final res result is 3. But the maximum is 4. So let's check. Because this is their undirected graph, we should prepare a parent. So the DFS function would start from 0 and minus 1. Because the node cannot be revisited, it will go from 0 to 1, so 1 cannot go to 0. So this, this is why we need a parent. So inside the DFS, it's going to be the, the y with the x. So from the beginning, the parent for the zero node, it is minus one. It's not exist, but we will set a minus one. It means this is the root node. But when it goes to one, so 
the y is 1, y's parent is 0, so this is why its parent is x. And we need also to check. Yeah, this is for the uh, for the second long, longest, but we need to check if uh, y equal to the parent or not. So if uh, this y equal to parent, we're gonna continue just to jump through the uh, rest of the code we didn't execute if uh, y equal to parent. This means uh, for zero goes to one, for this one, cannot equal to parent, so cannot be equal to to this uh, zero. Yeah, so currently this y is uh, one and x is uh, uh, zero and this this y uh, one should not equal to the parent. So if y equal to the uh, equal to the parent, if this y equal to the parent, so we're gonna continue, go to the, yeah, go to the next. Yeah, let, let's just uh, pre make some comment to check this one. So first of all, the DFS function will call from, uh, start from a zero. If DFS function call from zero, so what is x? So x is uh, zero x equal to zero, and the parent is equal to what? Equal to minus one. This is the first function call. And now, now this y is a, a one. One is not equal to parent. One is not equal to minus one. So we will just ignore this line. We will go for the next. So what is the next? So the next is a DFS. Yeah, DFS y and x. So the next is uh, DFS y one and uh, x. X is uh, zero, right? So for the DFS function, so currently this x becomes one and parent becomes uh, zero. So for one inside the x, so this y one inside the x. So currently x is uh, one inside the x. There can be a zero. So if this is zero equal to the parent, parent is also zero. So what we can do, we cannot go back. Yeah, so this is why we're gonna use a continue to check for the next iteration for the y. Yeah, basically this is uh, the entire code. There are, the difficult part is about the parent. We need to define a parent variable. It's similarly like a visited set, but this will be more concise. And also we need to take care of the first and the second variable. The first is the longest and the, and the second is the second longest. This is why in the result, we're gonna always check with the first plus the second. For example, the first, when it goes to not one, the first is a two. So for two, we're gonna check with the second. There's a second, it's also equal to two, so it's gonna be four. If there is another, Second, maybe one, it's gonna be three, but it will not update the result. Now let me run it to check if it works. Oh, I have uh, I have two returns. Let me delete one. Yeah, as you can see, it works. Now let me submit it to check if it, it can pass all the testing cases. As you can see, it passed all the testing cases, and it's pretty fast because this is a, a own time complexity. Because even though we use the DFS, but uh, basically we just traverse the graph from one node to another. So this is uh, why it is uh, so fast. All the time complexity is O e plus v. E is the number of uh, the edges and V is the number of vertices. But uh, for the tree structure problem, the E equals to Y, it means the number of edges is yeah, basically equal to the number of edges. Strictly it is not equal, but uh, yeah, it's nearly the same. So that is why the time complexity is ON. Yeah, because for the edges, we can say that one, two, three, four, and five, but for the nodes, it's gonna be five plus one. 
So the time complexity is like O n plus n plus one. It seems O two times n. So it, it is still O n time complexity. Thank you for watching. See you next time.